Hi guys, welcome to Fandomonium. I'm your host, Miri Jedikin, here today with Access Hollywood film critic Scott Mance. We are talking about what just happened at the summer movie box office. It was such a weird summer. Movies did badly, but the box office did well. It's a paradox. I'm confused. Scott, enlighten me. Well, what happened? You know, it's funny. I got to a certain point in the beginning of July where I started thinking, you know, this summer is not good, and I didn't <laughs> want to like, bring it up to anybody because I didn't want to put it out there that the right. summer just it was not a good summer quality-wise. Yeah, Captain America Civil War opened in the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Marvel movies always kick off the summer season, and it made over a billion dollars worldwide. Wide, and it was a great movie. It's one of the best movies in the MCU. Nice yes, shirt. Uh, rocking, representing Captain America here. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun. But what happened to the summer after that? You had one disappointing film after another. Like X-Men Apocalypse was okay. Yeah. That opened and it fell like 58% in its second weekend. Made about $155 million. Not bad, but not great. Mm -hmm. But then you had Alice Through the Looking Glass. Was terrible. Yeah, it was... Warcraft was terrible. Ghostbusters was just okay. Mm -hmm. What happened to all the big, great summer movies? Even Finding Dory, which was the sequel to Finding Nemo from 2003, that movie was great. Yeah. Finding Dory was just okay. Yeah. Secret Life of Pets was just okay, but that actually did really well. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that these summer movies, where we go to be entertained, but we also want to see a great summer film, they just haven't been good. Yeah. Also, you have a lot of summer blockbusters that were sequels or reboots or sequels of reboots. Oy, I mean, look, you know, Ghostbusters, <laughs> there was so much going into Ghostbusters because how could they remake Ghostbusters with an all female cast? And guess what? The cast was the best thing about the movie. Yeah. Otherwise, it was just okay. There was too much fan service to the original film, it never had its own identity. But as the summer wore on, and I mean wore on, people were disappointed left and right with these big blockbusters. So that by, the by the time you got to like Star Trek Beyond, which actually was good, and I'm not just saying that because I am a massive Star Trek fan, people are like, oh great, here's another sequel, and this mm -hmm. one's a sequel of a reboot, and they just kind of checked out. Also with Star Trek Beyond, made about 140 million so far, but it's gonna be the lowest grossing of the three reboot films. There's been a big trend of like the second week drop off, the second week slump. Suicide Squad is a great example of this, the biggest one being I think Warcraft, which had a huge drop off. What is happening? Is that because of reviews? Is it because of word of mouth? Like, why do these movies come out and they sort of have a strong opening weekend and then they just fizzle out? Okay, well, let's talk about the review aspect. When mm -hmm. you're talking about a movie like Warcraft, no one is going to read the reviews for Warcraft and then go see that movie or not see that movie. Something like that, even Captain America, Batman v Superman, and especially Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. these are critic-proof movies. It's not to say that critics don't matter, it's just that with certain films like that, critics' role, their roles are, are a little different. People will see the films no matter what, and then they'll go back and read the reviews to see if the critics agree with their take. I want to end this segment on a higher note, though. I want to talk about what did work this summer, because there were a couple of standouts and things that did well, namely R-rated comedies that were much smaller in budget, like Sausage Party, which just came out and is kind of killing at the box office, or you have Bad Moms, which did well and sustained success. What is it about those movies, and why aren't studios doing more of those films? You mean the mid-range films? Yeah. You see, people focus on the indies and they focus on the big Hollywood blockbusters. Everyone's been clamoring about the death of the mid-range film, but the two examples you just brought up, which are perfect examples of mid-range movies that didn't cost a whole lot. They're more than independent films, but they cost far less than like $150 million. Also R-rated. And they're R-rated mm -hmm. comedies, and they are not sequels. They are original films. The only mid-range film that didn't really do well out of this bunch was The Nice Guys. Right. The Nice Guys is my personal favorite Hollywood film of the summer. That doesn't include the indies like Captain Fantastic. But it was so funny and so smart, and I saw it three times. <laughs> you know, I, sh I laughed my ass off at this film. It was so well-written, Shane Black, who, directed uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He wrote Bang. Lethal Weapon when he, he was like a child. He wrote Lethal Weapon. He yeah. also did Iron Man 3, which is an underrated movie. Yeah. But 
I think a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of takeaway from this summer. If they're going to do a sequel or you're going to do a reboot, it better be good. Well, there you have it, guys. Scott Mance, the guru of all things movies. If you have an opinion, yes, or you just want to high-five me on Twitter, you can find me at Miri the Jedi. Scott, where can people find you to tell you, you what they think? You can follow me on Twitter at Movie Mance. Follow me on Facebook at Scott Mance. Uh, let's see, you catch me on Access Hollywood and Access Hollywood Live and AccessHollywood.com reviewing all the movies. Yay. And here with Miri the Jedi.